watch real quick. I'm going to show you how you time your electronic ignition on your Harley Davidson motorcycle. This goes for shovel head and evolution with the nose cone engine. Super quick and easy trick to use a timing light without making a mess to time your ignition system. I need to set my timing and tune the carburetor. Uh, I pull my spark plugs out and they're not black, but they're a little rich. They should be more of a brown and less of a gray color. So they're just a little bit rich, but I can't really adjust the carburetor until I get the timing right on. And the timing is gonna be set by a mark on this timing hole on the flywheel that's gonna tell me when the front piston is 35 degrees before top dead center. So I'm gonna find that mark, but the problem is when you time through this hole, you have to do with the engine running and oil is gonna blow out of this hole because the pistons are moving up and down inside the engine and they'll wanna blow the oil out the hole. So it's very hard to time. They make a clear plastic plug that you can put in here and use to time it, which will allow you to see in there, but keep the oil from blowing out. But it's really hard to see because the oil wipes across the inside of the plastic plug and the timing light glares on the plastic. So it's really hard to see it. So how I do it is I'm gonna find the mark on the flywheel and then right in here, this is your stator. This is your charging system, basically the alternator for the bike. This is called the rotor. Uh, the stator is the magnetic windings underneath of it. So the rotor, will be spinning with the engine. So what I'm gonna do is find the mark in here, then I'm gonna make a mark on the rotor in here, and I can time it with the primary cover off the bike. And it's real neat to see it. So you can either do it with the primary cover off the bike or just pull the inspection cover out and look inside, and you can see with the inspection cover off right here, you can see inside there and look at the rotor and find your mark and time it with a timing light. Okay, so I'm gonna roll this engine over forward and what's going to happen is the piston i just checked the piston is down right now i put an allen wrench down in the cylinder and the allen wrench is down so watch what happens as as i roll this flywheels around you'll see the allen wrench will start to come up you gotta be careful it doesn't bind in there but you'll see the allen wrench is going to start to come up as that piston comes up you see it moving and it's coming up and that's telling me that my piston's approaching top of its stroke or top dead center. So now I'm gonna roll, roll the engine over some more. Piston's still coming up. It's still pushing my Allen wrench out. So that means, that tells me my mark is gonna be coming around in the hole here any second. So I'm gonna get you down here so you can see that. Okay, so looking in this timing hole here, I'm gonna roll the engine around forward. And there's the mark that says TF, and that means top dead center for the front cylinder. I don't know if you can see that TF in there or not, but that's what that means. When I dynamic time this, I'm gonna wanna time it at the front cylinder advance mark. So I have to back up, because that advance mark is gonna be right there. It's gonna be that line that's gonna come before. And see the F there with the line? I hope you can see that in there. That's gonna come before the front cylinder top mark. Okay, so I've cleaned off the rotor here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a mark on the rotor. I'm gonna make two black marks so it's easy to see. I'm gonna make them nice and big and dark. And I cleaned the rotor off a of brake parts cleaner just so that my marker will stick and I put silver in the middle right there. And then I'm gonna put a mark right here on the webbing a silver mark on the webbing right there. And that is how I'm gonna time it with the light. The light's gonna allow me to look in through the inspection hole right here as it strobes and see that mark and show me my advanced marks. This is the way you do it without having all the oil blowing out of this hole, blowing in your face. Anybody who's tried this knows this. I think you can see somebody's put a mark here on the compensator and timed it before. But the problem with that is, is I had the compensator off, so I don't know where that mark was. Uh, and this can actually spin. So I do it on the rotor, which is made it to the crank nice and tight. So now I can either start it with the primary cover off, which I don't wanna do because it's super hard on the starting mechanism uh, and time it, or I can just put the primary cover on, leave the inspection cover off and time it to the timing hole. And that's how I'm gonna do it. And you'll be able to see that mark line up when I time it. So I got the primary cover back on, but the inspection cover off. And I'm gonna shoot in here, I'm gonna shoot this flashlight in here and see if you can see that timing mark. You can see the, see the timing mark I made on the rotor 
and the mark I made there on the primary chain case. So I'm gonna go ahead and shine my timing light in through here when I'm running the engine and show you how you do this without making a mess with oil all over the place. Here's my rinky dink Sears Roebuck timing light. I've had this thing since I was probably 20 years old, which is, you know, 35 years, but I don't know if anybody remembers Sears Roebuck or not, but it used to be a store you could walk into and buy stuff. And uh, they even used to make motorcycles. You clamp the trigger lead to the front spark plug wire. And I have a 12 volt power source right here. And I just hook up my negative and my positive to the 12 volt source. And what will happen is every time the front spark plug fires, if I pull this trigger, this lead is going to send a signal to the light and this strobe is going to appear. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look in here and point that strobe at my timing mark. And the timing mark should align right exactly when the strobe lines up. If they aren't aligned, it's either too advanced or too retarded spark events timing. How I'm gonna adjust my timing is over here on the other side. Here's the Daytona Twin Tech electronic ignition, and the cam cover runs off the end of the cam. I took my vintage Chopper Zinc billet points cover off so I can adjust, and I'll just rotate this clockwise or counterclockwise to set my timing depending on what the timing light tells me. relative to the strobe it's high the mark on the primary covers at three o'clock and my tummy mark on the rotor is coming in at about two o'clock if when you're looking at the rotor the rotor is spinning counterclockwise so what that means is the light is coming on after my mark passes where it should be and that means your timing is retarded and the reason it's doing that is because we're at uh, idle speed right now and you can hear my engine rpms increase to about 1500 rpm and the electronic ignition is doing exactly what it should as the engine RPM increases, it's advancing the timing. And what you see now is that my timing light fires at exactly the same time that my mark on my rotor is at three o'clock. So my timing marks are lining up now exactly when the light strobes and that's exactly where you wanna be. I just got lucky my timing's on point. The Carl Speed Shop Typhoon Carburetor is basically a CV carburetor, constant velocity carburetor, which means it has a variable venturi that allows a constant velocity of air to move through the engine. It's really a big billet aluminum SU carburetor. Amy Larry told me that SU was the first two letters and suck. He couldn't stand them. But anyway. I'm gonna lean the carburetor out a little more and there's only one adjustment on the carburetor and it's right here on the bottom. So this nut up here is a jam nut and I just loosen that jam nut. And to lean the carburetor out, I'm gonna turn this bolt on the bottom in. And that's gonna basically raise the seat that the needle rides in. So I turn it one sixth of a turn each time, and which is one flat on the bolt to lean it out. So I don't over lean the engine. So I'm gonna break loose the jam nut and I'm gonna turn the bolt to raise the raise the needle one flat and then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the jam nut back up and then I ride it and I'll see how my plug burn looks but that's as simple as you can get for a carburetor adjustment and this thing is really responsive with the typhoon on it so uh, I'm really happy with the way it runs so I'll get it perfect
spark plug burn after I lean the carburetor out a little bit. Uh, it definitely looks good, but it's still got a little bit of dark carbon buildup on it. And as I lean the carburetor out a little bit more, what will happen is the added heat will burn the dark carbon off. and You'll get to more of like a brown tan color burn on the electrode. But as you can see, I'm in a pretty good situation right now. I got my timing set, so now I can really mess with this carburetor and get it perfect.